Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're excited to be talking to Ram Ramamuthi, the director of AI research at Zoho. Ram, it's great to speak with you. David, pleasure is mine. Happy to be here. Uh, maybe if you could just start things off, give just a, a quick overview of Zoho. Well, Zoho is what we call the operating system of business. So everything to run your business, right from your CRM to your help desk, to your accounting and invoicing, to your HR management, recruitment. So we have all. So everything to do with your customers, everything to do with your employees, uh, we cater to the enterprise. That is what Zoho uh, in one sense. In the other sense, we are a very, very traditionally run company. Uh, we started off in 1996. We have a very long-term focus, zero external funding so far, uh, profitable since the day one, and, and no idea of going public or taking external funds as well. So it's run like a super traditional business, uh, and we are in it for the long game. Now, as we, you know, we're wrapping up 2024, we're heading into 2025. One of the hot topics everyone is talking about is AI. Right. And for me, who better to ask about that topic than you? So let's jump in and maybe get educated on the subject a bit more and uh, maybe start talking about uh, AI in the context of security. To what extent does the proliferation of LLMs or large language models and modern AI systems make data privacy harder to maintain? Perfect, David. I think uh, data privacy has been challenged in the last decade. I mean, if you think about it, uh, we have had these cheaper data collecting sensors. Then we had the infinite computing power on the cloud. I mean, your smartwatch can, it's, it's, it's inexpensive. It's, it's very accessible to the entirety of the population. And, and then you have cheaper computing power on the cloud, close to infinite computing power on the cloud. You can keep scaling up and then revenue models around data, right? So we don't pay for our search engines. We don't pay for our social networks. Now, this itself is a very patchy stat and then enter large language models, which try and memorize the internet and uh, try, is able to give out an emergent behavior. Now, if you think about it, there could be a lot of context in what I could say, but when an LLM memorizes what I wrote, let's say on a social media site, the context is removed. It's, it, it just trains the data. So privacy, especially in the LLM era, is, is a very, very difficult and a very different thing than the consumer era where uh, we just used data and exchange of dollars. We don't pay for our search engines, right? So the same way, now it's very important for businesses and individuals per se to be aware of what is happening with the data, what is happening with the digital trail that they are creating. And especially businesses today, every business is a digital business. Be it buying a coffee or buying a car, your first touch point is probably going to be via an ad, is, is going to be via an app, is going to be via a website. And companies can use this to their competitive advantage. And if you have a third party who gives you subsidized software so that a company gives all their sensitive information to them, now something is totally wrong there. So it is all the more important in late 2024, early 2025 for individuals and businesses alike to be very aware of what is happening in the privacy space, very aware on who is consuming their data, who has access to their data, and how are they using it. So we are in interesting times. So the next couple of years is going to be uh, super important. And we have had a lot of bills in, in, in bits and pieces across the globe. The California Privacy Act is one. The Europe has some AI regulations. Over the next couple of years, we will see these legal frameworks evolving at the speed in which AI has evolved as well. In fact, AI has evolved so fast, the legal frameworks are catching up. So it's imperative for businesses, for industries, for academia, for the government, and for the legal uh, framework to work together to come ahead and ace this challenge. Now, Ram, everyone has access to AI. It's, it's, it's open to everyone. What are some right. of the ways that AI systems are being leveraged by bad actors and what can companies do if they're attacked with this? Yeah, David, I think uh, 
it's become all the more easy to write a super convincing phishing email it's become all the more easy to create a deep fake of myself and and what was just quoted as oh i created a deep fake of the ceo i created a deep fake of a celebrity now it's hitting closer home i mean somebody could just call my mom and say hey i'm stuck in this place with up and my, my phone has uh, uh, lost its battery so maybe please transfer so much to the shopkeeper to this uh, vendor so that i can uh, get out of the situation and and trust me my mom would gladly do it right so it, it's hitting closer home uh, it's important to exercise your privacy rights and and they say a couple of pictures in your social media uh, about 30 seconds of your audio recording and it's so easy and so simple to create a deep fake version of you and it could say things that you could you would never say and it's important to exercise the right privacy controls i think a lot of this starts with awareness be aware on who all have access to your data how are they going to use the data are these data points erased when you leave a particular system and same thing about businesses right so today a, a bigger scam in social media is you you post like a, a company uh, let's say you post like a big airline and then uh, people start complaining about their cancellations refund and you get sensitive information from them and then try and go commit a fraud with it so it's important to validate your presence as a business it's have a verified social media page ensure that continuously educate your customers not to share if you are an airline tell your customers not to share your pnr uh, because with the pnr and last name you can get all the details out of that booking so it's it still is borderline about user education but it's very important to be all the more aware than ever to take care of this yeah super smart yeah it- data has always been important uh, to try to keep uh, close to the vest but it's just it's just you know as the years go by it's just getting harder and harder and 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 you know more things are uh, yeah. negatively happening with with people's uh, data right speaking of the uh, data privacy uh, talk a little bit what is zoho doing to mitigate privacy risks associated with ai and can ai combat or mitigate attacks or leaks enabled by ai perfect david i think uh, like i said we've been a very traditional company and and ever since the start of our business we've had a very very strong privacy stance irrespective of how the legal framework evolved even in our free tools we never had ads uh, over the years and and we don't plan to do so also at zoho we strongly believe the customer's data is the customer's data and nobody else has any right on top of it so now we have been building ai for the last 12 years now we started off with ai in late 2011 so it, it's almost 13 years now and we've had a really strong privacy stance uh, we have very stringent boundaries uh, even though let's say we both work for the same company and and there could be sensitive information uh, for me there could be sensitive information for you let's say our payroll is sensitive and the ai model knows the privacy boundaries here this is an individual boundary and then there is an organization level boundary where let's say in zoho crm we have this feature where what is the best time to contact a customer and i am an insurance company operating in the bay area and i've been using zoho crm for the last 10 years now let's say you are my competitor you get onboarded today if zoho crm is going to predict the best time to contact your customer based on my information then that's essentially selling my business secret to you so we don't do that there are stronger organization boundaries and then there is also a global model where things like translation things like security attack detection things like a ddos attack prevention these are global to across our customer instances again here we ensure that no direct or indirect pii uh, personally identifiable information ever flows into the system so having these privacy boundaries clearly defined help us build our ai stack accordingly and the way we do it is your data your company's data is only used to spruce up your company's ai model so we drop a baseline ai model into every company's instance and depending on that company's data the model evolves so model deployed in company a will be very different from the model deployed in company b after 6 months of deployment the other thing we do is we also right size these models so today uh, the trend i see is throw a large language model at every problem you see and to sustain that large language model one you need large amounts of compute and two you also need larger amounts of data 
and this cannot be uh, sustainable for especially for the small and medium uh, companies because they don't have that much of data so that they can have a model for themselves that is so accurate so we right size these models we use a combination of small medium and large language models and narrow language models that just do one thing at a time so we combine all of this and decide what is better at a given point in time so you take something like an expense management system where your company's employees travel on businesses and uh, travel on business visits and then they expense the expenses that happen there so it starts off with taking a photo of the receipts and uploading it into the portal and then an administrator who approves this portal based on the travel policy for that particular traveler for that particular trip that they took so there is a lot of complex information in the enterprise and we have about 15 different models right from a small model to do the ocr uh, a medium model to understand what the currency is to itemize the items in the receipts and a large model to see if it violates the policy which is a travel policy document that you have written uh, in human understandable english so the combination of these models the right sizing of the models help us maintain stricter privacy levels so it starts there and not just that we also take security very seriously so it's not about authenticating you at the beginning it's not about a multi factor authentication when you sign in but it's also continuously monitoring that if i am using the system as i usually use especially post pandemic this has become a serious challenge what was sensitive enterprise information that was only being accessed in the office premises on the office network from the office computer is now democratized right remote work is here to stay you can basically access sensitive information from anywhere and it's important for your enterprise software to ensure that the data only reaches the safe hands all of a sudden they find ram exporting all leads of from the crm and i've never done that before so it essentially means either i've gone wrong so prompt the second factor authentication to see uh, if i'm still with the organization uh, if i'm doing data exfiltration or my laptop is stolen or my credentials got harvested by somebody else and they are trying to export all sensitive information from your business so in essence whatever we are doing we see privacy and security as a part of the stack it's not a differentiator it's a basic ingredient we right size the ai models to ensure that privacy and security remains intact we also keep continuously authenticating users to ensure that there is no uh, data exfiltration or uh, using the app in a way that is not intended uh, to be used now which business units thinking like sales marketing accounting hr or maybe the specific tools and solutions will be impacted the most by ai in the coming year and which use case do you expect to just go away or become less popular perfect david i think anything that deals with redundancy right and 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 the way i see it is AI is going to take ten percent of what somebody does and and do it ten times better, and that's all about it. So the question on will AI replace tons of jobs? No, but will AI replace jobs that keep doing redundant things? That is going to be automated so that the human beings can be productive uh, in whatever they do. And generally, like internet, I think AI is going to touch. all the departments in the business or all the industries that we see but the early movers will be the ones that are heavily digitized something like finance something like sales and marketing is completely digital whereas something like let's say a facilities management or something like a legal framework is still not as digitized as a finance team or a marketing team is so more the digital maturity more the ai maturity these will be the early adopters or even the leaders in terms of ai adoption uh the others will follow suit because it's it's imperative ai is going to touch all fields but the earlier ones will be the more digitally mature ones and the others will follow suit and finally ram how do you see ai's advancement changing the makeup of the technology industry in the coming year in other words you know could ai lead to an adopt adapt or die situation for legacy software providers <laughs> right um yeah they would like like anything i mean this is going to be a uh, a very important piece of technology uh something like cloud i mean i'm sure when when cloud started coming up it would have been a distant dream to have every app on the cloud 
today it's a given any app that you use seamlessly works on the cloud seamlessly works on mobile apps i think the same thing is happening to ai 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 we all we've spoken about it for years now is when the rubber meets the road 2025 will be a good start uh, we will see a lot of ai in action a lot of ai being deployed in production a uh, lot of enterprises embracing ai to ensure that they get the best out of the data that they have collected over the digital transformation era so ai is here to stay and it's important like uh, businesses have to ride this wave so i mean you we we've seen this right think of the music industry we started off with vinyl records we went on to cds we went on to cassettes then we went on to cds then we went on to downloading mp3s then we went on to streaming then the parallel would be the movie industry we started off with films then we went on to vhs then we went on to cd dvds blu rays now we are streaming in in all these cases the difference between one era to the other era was just distribution but now we are entering the era of creation in all these cases the time taken to create music in 1990 is the same time taken to create music in 2024 except for some 10% improvement in all the toolings so you don't have an arc you don't need an orchestra of people you can just do it with a computer so that was 10 15% of improvement but the time taken was essentially the same but now from the next year onwards or even right now as we speak end of 2024 creation has become so faster ai is impacting creation time so it's a knowledge revolution that is going to happen the good thing is humans still have the tactical intelligence you still have to prompt everything to ai ai cannot come up with the new sorting algorithm ai cannot come up with a new searching algorithm but ai can help you connect to apis and get the data flowing across a couple of apps so this is the era of creation ai is here to stay whatever app you use consumer or business ai underpinnings are going to be mainstream it's not going to be a competitive advantage it's it's not going to be a differentiator it's going to be bare minimum any software is expected to have bare minimum ai functionalities and that is the future that we are heading towards Well, Ram, thanks again for taking time to speak to VM Blog and providing your expertise on AI. I know AI is going to be a huge topic throughout not only 2025 but beyond. So, as it evolves and uh, you know, everything uh changes, both good and bad, we're we're going to uh, you know, see a lot more of AI and uh and I can't wait to see the direction that it takes. Absolutely uh pleasure is mine uh David thank you to you and VM blog for the opportunity thank you for having me here all right thanks